So here are three practice problems on melonic ester syntheses and the like. So question one, turn melonic ester into this carboxylic acid with a bunch of carbon groups on it. Number two, turn this melonic ester into somehow, turn, somehow turn it into a six member ring with a carbon-carbon double bond attached. Now for number three, you have to work backwards from this structure of a carboxylic acid with all of these reactions to get you to this structure over here. Okay, so give those a try, pause the video if you want. Otherwise, let's start with number one. Number one, we have to turn this melonic ester into this. So I'm going to write number two so I have room. So whenever approaching a melonic ester synthesis theme question, what you should first do is look for your, carbo your carbonyl base species or your oxygen base species. In this case, it's carboxylic acid, and we know we can turn carboxylic acid into an ester. What you want to do is you want to find that carbon that came from your carbonyl and look a single bond away, right here. That carbon right there is almost always going to be this carbon over here. As long as that carbon has a bunch of other bonds on it, at least, I'd say at least one other bond. Usually this is the carbon through which you added a bunch of things using that OR minus and then step two carbon chain with leaving group on it. Let's see how that happens. So. I can either go backwards or I can go forwards. I'm going to go backwards for this one. Actually, I'm going to go forwards for this one. So I see that I need to add one carbon chain that is two carbons long and a second one that is also two carbons long to this carbon over here. So how do I do that? Step one, my base. My base should match the OR group of my ester. So I'm going to say OR minus, or you could write NaOE, or sorry, you should write OET minus, or you could write NaOET, they're the same thing for our purposes. Step two, I need the carbon chain that I want to add. Let's say I add this top carbon chain first, one, two. So I need a halogen that is attached to one, two carbons. One, two. Okay? And so what happens is in the first step, this carbon gets deprotonated, and then the negative charge that ends up on this carbon attacks carbon 1 and kicks the bromine off, so now carbon 1 and 2 are attached. So now I have the melonic ester mostly the same. But now I have 1 and 2 attached. 1, 2. Now I just have to repeat the process a second time because I need to add this methyl group, so carbon 1 and a separate carbon 1 and 2. So I'm going to use the exact same arrow. And if it was a different carbon chain, of, if, if it was a chain of a different length, you just add the extra, you just add or lose however many carbons to make it match that. But in this case, I want two, so it's once again same OR group as my uh, as my ester for my base, so OET minus. Step two, one two carbons and a leaving group, bromine, and that will add these two carbons to this to the center carbon. So now I have again my melonic ester, my OET my carbon, my other ester. But now this carbon in the middle has one, two, and then a second one, two. Now what I have to do is I have to somehow turn this ester into a carboxylic acid and then get rid of one of the other esters. And remember, the way we do that is with that three-step decarboxylation process. I'm going to do the first two steps before we cut the carboxylic acid off because I, I want to emphasize the fact that the purpose of having OH minus, step one, and then H plus, or H3O plus, step two, is to turn every ester in this structure into a carboxylic acid. So both of these esters with these two, with this, these two reactions will become carboxylic acid. So I have COOH, single bond, carbon, COOH and then I have the two carbons that were attached. Now I only have one more arrow that I need to do to get here, to uh, the final product. And that is, I need first to find my carboxylic acid, label that one, then I go alpha carbon, and then one carbon further, as long as that third carbon, that beta position, has a C double bond O, no matter what it comes from, as long as it's C double bond O, I can decarboxylate, and the way I do that, is I chop the bond off between one and two, and so that gives me this, because here's three, here's two, and one has come off as a CO2 molecule, so here's carbon one. Okay, so that's how you would do the synthesis for number one.
Number two is a fairly tricky question when it comes down to melonic ester synthesis because somehow I'm turning this diester into a six member ring with a carbon carbon double bond. How do I do that? Well, the first point to make is we need to find something that is comparable to my melonic ester. And the only thing that I could think that kind of resembles this, even if it's a very bit of a, a fairly big stretch, is I see a double bond over here. Because we know that at the end of a melonic ester synthesis, we usually have a carboxylic acid left over because what we end up doing is we use heat and we decarboxylate. So I chop that OH off and now I have this. And then on that alpha position to the double bond, I have whatever I usually added. So what if I had a six member ring there? Well, let's, let's work backwards from this for now. How can I make a carboxylic acid into a carbon-carbon double bond? Remember that reaction that can turn carbon-oxygen double bonds into carbon-carbon double bonds, the Wittig reaction, or the Wittig reaction. Now, that reaction only works with C double bond O, not carboxylic acid, where you have that OH sticking off. So we need to first turn this into an aldehyde. How do we turn carboxylic acid into an aldehyde? First, you have to reduce it all the way to an OH using LiAlH4. Use LiAlH4, and now I have a six-membered ring with one carbon and an OH sticking off of it. And then how do I turn an OH into a carbon-oxygen double bond? You use the weak, the weak oxidizing agent, PCC. Now I have my six-membered ring with a carbon-oxygen uh, carbon double bond. And how do I turn that carbon-oxygen double bond into a carbon-carbon double bond? Well, you see on the end of this double bond is a CH2. So my goal is to replace this oxygen with a CH2. So what I have to do is P, PH3, that phosphorus will be double bonded to a CH2 because the CH2 will replace the oxygen there. Okay? So now I have half the synthesis done because this, this we can work with a bit more easily. Remember, the way that melonic ester synthesis works is we have my diester and then I pull off a proton from the alpha position and that negatively charged carbon then attacks a carbon with a leaving group on it. So before I work with this, I need to, before I start adding any bonds to make it go back to this, I have to turn this back into an ester. And not just one ester, but the diester where I have the, the two esters sharing a carbon. So how do I do that? Remember, going backwards, the reaction steps would be first OH minus, H plus, and then heat. But I'm going to just do the heat step first because it's important to point out how that works. So we're going to do heat first. So we know with the heat step, that's the part that chops the carboxylic acid off, which means I need to be adding a carboxylic acid somewhere. So I'm going to start by just drawing everything the same. Okay. Now we know in decarboxylation process, we chop a carbon off, which means this is the end product. This should be one carbon lesser, one lesser carbon. This should have one carbon fewer than the, I can't English. This should have one less carbon than the number of carbons this has. So if I'm going backwards, that means I'm going to add a carbon to this. So remember what we did. We said that the carbon yield that stays is number three, and it's attached to an alpha carbon two. And then carbon one is the CO2 that comes off. So let's say CO2 is over here. That's carbon one. Which means what CO2 was before it got chopped off was carbon one attached to carbon two. So this is what happened, what I should have before I use heat. Now I can turn this back into the two esters using um, the OH minus H3O plus step. So for this arrow, I'm going to do step one, OH minus, step two, H plus, or H3O plus, whatever, does the same thing for our purposes. And that's going to bring me back to a six-membered ring with two esters coming off of it. And we know the esters OR group that we want needs to be OET because we're trying to get back to melonic ester. So now I have what did I do? I'm running out of space. So I have my six-membered ring 
And then on this carbon, I have one ester, and I have the other ester. Okay, and then over the R, I have OH minus and H plus step two. Now, I need to somehow get a six-member ring attached to that alpha position. And the way I do that, I have to think, well, going backwards, if I was going backwards earlier, I was just chopping a carbon bond apart and putting a leaving group on it, right? Because if I had, say, when we were doing number one, I had I had something like this, and then going backwards, what I did was I said NaOET step one, and then I took these two carbons and put a bromine there, and then that brought me back to my melanic ester. So what I'm trying to do here is basically the same. I'm going backwards, I'm erasing this thing off the carbon. I'm erasing one carbon-carbon bond that is connected to that alpha position. So what I want to do here is the same. Over my arrow, I'm going to have NaOET, because that's the base I want to use, and I'm going to erase one carbon bond to this carbon at the alpha position. So what that means is I would have no longer a ring, but six carbons Here's, my, here's one ester, here's the other ester. I broke the bond that connects one end of the ring to that alpha position, and now what makes this carbon going forward with NaOET want to connect there? A leaving group, so I just put a bromine on there. Okay, so what I did was I, an, intramolecular, um, an intramolecular reaction. This deprotonates here, and then that carbon attacks this position to kick the bromine out. Now, my goal is to turn this into melonic ester, right? So I have to do this a second time. Now I'm going to erase the other bond and do very much the same thing. So if I erase, if I say step one, NaOET, and I go back to my, my melonic ester now because I'm erasing this bond now, I have my melonic ester, and then what had to react with this to form that six-membered ring? Well, if I'm chopping off this bond, this carbon has to get a bromine on it as well, which means the two pieces that came together to make this ring, or to connect this chain, would be, let's count our carbons, one, two, three, four, five, a five carbon chain where each end of that chain had a bromine on it. So one, two, three, four, five, bromine, bromine. So the way you can make rings with melonic ester synthesis is by having a carbon chain with more than one leaving group on it. Because that will ensure that you attach one end to the melonic ester and then you repeat with your base and you attach the other end. So you're kind of like tying a knot. And so this is how you can do this synthesis. So now to number three. Number three, we're given the product of a long series of reactions and we have to work our way backwards to figure out what that starting material was. The first thing to do with this, rea this reaction series is to look at the things that you know can go over the arrow together. OH minus and H0 positive we know go together to turn an ester, something with an OR group, into a carboxylic acid, something with an OH group. So we can think of these two as one arrow together. NaOH with a carbon chain with a leaving group, we know allows you to use a diester. The carbon, uh, so you, the base will deprotonate that center carbon, and then that carbon would attach to here. So it would give you something like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. And we have another reaction like that right here. It's the same reaction, but with a different carbon chain. So we know that these two reactions go together, these two reactions go together, these two reactions go together, and heat, we know, if we ever see heat following OH minus and H2O positive, must be being used for a decarboxylation reaction. So let's start from this, okay? And our first step is heat. The first thing you should do is say, okay, if heat does decarboxylation, I'm gonna look for the carbonyl that is still in my structure because decarboxylation, going this way, chops a carbonyl off, a carboxylic acid off. 
So if this is still here, that was not the carboxylic acid that got chopped off. And we know we label that three, we go to the alpha position and say that's two, and now we draw in the CO2 next to it because that was the carbon with the double bond O and the OH that got chopped off. Which means going backwards, I have to connect carbon two to carbon one. So I'm gonna draw my C double bond O, my OH is still the same. I have connection to carbon two, one, two, three, one, two, and now I have a carboxylic acid here. So all I did was add carbon one to carbon two. I actually connected them. One of the most common mistakes I see over and over again is uh, people drawing the COOH onto a carbon that's already here. No, remember this reaction chopped that carbon off. So it should be floating away. It shouldn't be any, anywhere on any of these carbons. You actually have to add in that carbon, draw a bond to a new carbon and make that your carboxylic acid. Now we have step one, OH minus, step two, H3O plus, uh, H3O plus. And we said that that reaction will turn an OR group into an OH group on your, so it turns an ester into a carboxylic acid. Now what should my OR group be? Because we are going backwards, how do we know? We weren't given a starting material. What you do is you look over the arrows and you see do they give you an OR group? And they do, NaOCH3. So our OR group should be an OCH3. So I changed this on purpose because every other question has been OET. Now I'm changing up the ester. The OR group shouldn't be OET, it should be OCH3 because that's what they give you in the context of the question. So I do double bond O, double bond O, and now I have two OCH3s on either side. And then I still have those carbons attached. Let's say, let's number these. Let's say this is one, two, and here's three, four, and five. Now let's look what's over this arrow. So the, this arrow, so this set of arrows go together. So I have my arrow going that way. Step one is NaOCH3, my base to deprotonate the, the central carbon. And step two, a bromine with one, two, three carbons attached to it. So which of these carbons, which of these carbon chains had to have been added by number two? It must be carbons three, four, and five, because that's the only, that's three carbons that are attached to the alpha position. So going backwards, now I have double bond O, double bond O, both of these being connected to an OCH3. And then I have carbons one and two left. But that's where th these arrows come in. Carbons one and two, step one, NaOCH3. Step two, two carbons with the bromine. That's where these two carbons must have come from. So structure X must have been this diester, where it's two carbonyls, but the OR groups are OCH3, and then OCH3. Put this part through the bottom. Mid OCH3. So this is what structure X would be, because I have five carbons, one, two, three, four, five. I have eight hydrogens, three, six, eight, and I have four oxygens, one, two, three, four. So that's how you would approach this, this reaction series.